Hi, and welcome to the first ever The Coder Hero Introduction to Programming Instructional Video. I'm your host, The Coder Hero, and I appreciate you joining me today. Today we're going to be going over the installation of a program I like to call, well, not I like to call, but a program called Code Blocks. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the installation of Code Blocks and get you started with your very first uh, program. We're going to be assuming that you're using a Windows computer and that you're interested in the C++ language because that's what I'm going to be doing all of my coding in. So let's get started. First of all, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up your favorite browser, whether that's Chrome or Firefox, hopefully not Edge or Internet Explorer, and uh, you're going to want to go to codeblocks.com org. There it is. Uh, alternatively, you can also Google search for code blocks and it should be the first um, search that comes up. So codeblocks.org. Uh, on this page is a bunch of information about the software. Um, I've never read it myself, but I'm sure it's pretty interesting. What we're looking for specifically is right here in the downloads section. So we're going to click downloads. And then we have a bunch of different options that we have. We want download the binary release. Click that. Now we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to find the Windows section. And there's a bunch of different options here. We want code blocks 16.01 mingw setup.exe. Uh, Minj. Uh, MinGW is actually minimum GNU for Windows, and it's the compiler that we're going to be using for code blocks. So that's the one we want. You're going to select either FossHub or SourceForge. Personally, I use SourceForge, so that's what we're going to do. And your download will begin automatically. Now, I'm not going to download it because I already have it set up and ready to go, uh, but the download is 80 megabytes and should take about two minutes. So. Please feel free to pause this video at this time and wait for your download to complete. I'll wait. Got it? Great. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on your code blocks program and it's going to come up with your, uh, I guess I should have installed it, with your application. I actually do have it. So download code blocks setup. Code blocks. You're going to get your administrative pop-up that's going to ask you, do you want to download this? And we can close that, Boom. just like this. Nice. So feel free to click on next, next. Uh, I agree. Make sure you read this incredibly long user uh, license agreement. Okay, got it. I agree. You want to leave everything in the default and click next and then you're going to decide where you want to install it. I've already installed it so I'm not going to click install but once you do it takes about two minutes to finish the installation once the, and I mean well we can pause again so feel free to pause this video again while you install it. Do, 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 do. Got it? Great. Okay. After you're done installing it, it's going to ask you whether or not you want to associate files with code blocks. I always select the third option, which is associate my C and C++ files with code blocks. Though you don't have to have, uh, you don't have to make that decision, or you don't have to choose what I choose. Anyways, so click on that, click next. It's going to ask you, do you want to open code blocks? We sure do. So we're going to open code blocks. Codeblocks is the open source cross-platform IDE, and as of this video, we're using 16.0. All right, ready to get started? Nope, not yet. First, we gotta make sure that our compiler is set up properly. A compiler is the uh, part of the program that turns what we type in into assembly language so the computer knows exactly how to execute our program. So we want to come up here to settings and we're going to click that and then we're going to scroll on down to compiler which is going to bring up our compiler options. We want to select on select global compiler settings 
and toolchain executables. It's a mouthful. Anyways, uh, you can click auto detect. It auto detected mine, and uh, this is where mine's located. You can also click this little triple button, uh, an ellipsis, and that'll bring up your search menu. And what you're looking for is where you downloaded your code blocks and a folder called mingw. Once you've located that or auto detected, click OK. Now we're ready to get started. Whew, you're flying through this. Good job. Okay, we want to create a program, right? Let's do it. Come up here to File, New, Project. We have all these different options for different projects that we can make, but throughout this entire tutorial process, the only one we're going to be doing is console applications. So console applications are applications where uh, basically like a command prompt comes up and all the information gets input and output through that command prompt. So click console application and select go. What type of files are we working with? C++, the best. Next. Now we want to select where we want to save our project. Um, I've already got mine set up in a folder called tutorials. Feel free to put it wherever you like in your computer. And for this first project, we are going to call it Hello World. Hello World is sort of a rite of passage for all programmers, so it's only fitting that if this is your first time coding, you should start with Hello World too. So we got Hello World as our project title, and you'll see our file name is Hello World.cpb. And we're going to click Next. Leave all this stuff just the way it is, all default, click finish. Boom! There we go! Our program! Uh, but we have an empty screen. What's going on here? Ah, it's a good question. So over here we have what's called the management pane, and that's where all of our files for our projects are located. We're going to click on source and open our main CPP. That's main C++. Double click that. Ah, here we go. Here's our code. Now I know what you're saying. Coder Hero, there's a bunch of stuff here. I don't know what any of this stuff means. I mean, you're supposed to be teaching me stuff. All right, well, let me teach you some stuff. Let's go through this line by line, and I'll give you your first lesson in C++ coding. So line one, what we have is hashtag include. It's actually pound include, but you can say hashtag. It's cool. So we have what's called the include. This statement allows the program to include libraries. And libraries, just as it sounds, is like a whole entire section of books. And each book has a set of instructions for our program. These books are actually called functions, and we're going to go over those later. But right now, you can think of this as include a library. For this program, we need to include the IO stream library, or input output stream library. This allows us to read and write data to our screen. Um, next line, using namespace standard. The using statement allows us to conveniently access the library's functions. This library's functions, or books, are called standard, or STD, for short. Now every C++ pro program begins with a function called main. This is our main set of instructions for our program. This tells our program where to begin and where to end. Um, so, our main function wants to get back a number called an integer to let it know that it, it went successful. In this case, we are returning to our function, our main function, zero, to let it know, yeah, you reached the end, everything's okay. Every block of instructions within our program is going to be surrounded by these things called curly braces. Curly braces are kind of like borders, um, like fences. We fence in various bits of programming instruction to let the program know that, hey, this block is going to start here and end here. And we'll get more into that a little bit later. So inside of our program, we have the single line. And it's got some of these terms that you may not be familiar with. Count these double greater than symbols and endl. Oh, what is that you're saying? No problem. These are actually pretty simple. Count 
is uh, what allows our program to display information to the console, or it is a console output, or count console output. Um, these double greater than statements are actually insertion operators. It inserts the data into the console. Then we have hello world right uh, in between there. And lastly, we have endl, which is end line. Now, if we wanted to run this, uh, how do we do that, right? Uh, I mean, we have these lines here, they're just kind of staring at us, but they're not really doing anything. Up here at the top, and all along this toolbar, you got tons and tons of buttons. That's a lot of buttons. The only ones we're worried about right now, the only one we're worried about, is this one right here. It's a yellow cog with a green play button. This is the build and run. What this does is it builds our program, compiles it, and then runs it. We could do this manually by clicking the yellow cog build and then the yellow cog run, or we can just click it and do it in one click. I say let's do it in one click. When you click on the build and run, a console should pop up and it should say, hello world, hello program, awesome. You just did your first C++ program. Nice, good for you. Let's talk about a few more things, change a few things, and then we'll wrap it up for this session. I wanna to talk to you about comments. Every time you create a program, other people are probably going to wanna to read that program. You're gonna to wanna to share it with other people and have them be able to understand what you're doing. A great way to uh, convey information to other people is to put comments into your program. There are two types of comments, block comments and line comments. Let's start with block comments. Block comments already always start with a forward slash and a star. See how everything went kind of brown here? That's because a uh, forward slash and star indicate that everything afterwards is part of my comment that's not gonna be part of my program. What I like to do is I like to make a few extra stars here. Turns everything a nice bright red and then I do a space star, and then it kind of gives me this nice little block here. But um, as soon as you put another forward slash on the end of it, all the rest of my program turns the regular color, which means that it will get ran, but nothing in here will get ran. So what I'm gonna write in here is, this program displays text to the console. Noise. Sweet, so now we have a block comment. So now when somebody opens our program, they know exactly what our program does. But maybe we want to remember what these different uh, words mean. We can put that into our program too using a line comment. Line comments are two forward slashes, <clears throat> which will only comment out that singular line. And we're gonna put here, count means console output. And at the end, we'll put endl means end line. I forgot to mention, what end of line does is it moves the cursor in our display to the very next line. Whoops. Make sure everything's lined up here. Now when we build and run, you'll see that these sections, these comments, won't be in our program at all. Build and run. And here you see, hello world. None of the comments are included in there. Nice. Last, but certainly not least, let's go ahead and write a few more lines so that we can get used to using count and end line. Let's say count the coder hero is us is the best. End line. Count. He is also super handsome. Woot. Now we're gonna run into a problem here, but I wanna show you what that problem is and then we'll finish up for this section. Let's go ahead and build and run that. Hello world, the coder hero is the best. 
He is also super handsome. Woot! Oh no! What's going on here? I need a space in between my words. That's because this insertion operator isn't like a space. What it is, is it's just inserting whatever is in between it to the console. As you see here at the end, we don't have a space in between our exclamation mark and our quotation marks. So we need to either enter a space after that or before our woot. Let's go ahead and enter it after it. Let's build and run. There we go. He is also super handsome. Woot! Nice. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, beginning tutorial on C++. Tune in next time. We're going to have um, lots of information, lots of really good times. We're going to be creating cool functions and cool programs. We're going to be doing things like a calendar program, a Sudoku program, um, just a lot of really cool programs. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time.